Vitamin K deficiency is the topic for this video. And first, let's talk about the two forms of vitamin K. The first is the exogenous form, known as vitamin K1. And this is also known as phyloquinone. And this, of course, you get from food, such as green vegetables like spinach. And an important point to remember is that dietary fat will help enhance the absorption of vitamin K1. And that's important to remember because in medical conditions where people have malabsorption of fat, they will also result in a state of vitamin K deficiency. The next is the endogenous form, the form of vitamin K that is produced by your body, vitamin K2, also known as menaquinones. And this form is synthesized by the bacteria in the intestinal tract. So now let's get into vitamin K deficiency and some of its causes. Well, obviously, inadequate intake or inadequate production will result in vitamin K deficiency. So either you're not eating enough green vegetables or food that has vitamin K or your gut is not producing enough vitamin K. Another reason for vitamin K deficiency is fat malabsorption. And I touched on this earlier. Any medical condition in which the body is not absorbing fat will also result in vitamin K deficiency because dietary fat enhances the absorption of vitamin K. Another important reason is medications such as Coumadin. And Coumadin, as most of you know, is an anticoagulant. And the reason this can cause vitamin K deficiency is because Coumadin interferes with the synthesis of vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about these coagulation or clotting factors. Vitamin K helps with the formation of coagulation factors and in particular the factors are factor 2, 7, 9, and 10. So these four factors are involved. And what do these do? They help form blood clots. And that, of course, helps control bleeding. So if a patient is vitamin K deficient, the patient is unable to form these very important clotting factors. And the person will, therefore, bleed excessively if the patient is deficient in vitamin K. And this is a major cause of death, especially in newborns. And in particular, a medical condition known as hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. And what happens in hemorrhagic disease of the newborn is that a baby is born with vitamin K deficiency and approximately one to seven days after birth, the patient will develop severe bleeding which manifests itself as an intracranial hemorrhage. And there's many reasons why a newborn can be deficient in vitamin K. And the reasons are as follows. The neonatal gut that is responsible for producing vitamin K is usually sterile in the first few days of life so the gut's not producing vitamin K. Another reason is because the neonate did not receive vitamin K from the placenta. Then, approximately 2 to 12 weeks after the baby is born, vitamin K deficiency can also be in existence because of being breastfed. And the reason is because breast milk is low in vitamin K. So for all these reasons combined, vitamin K deficiency can occur in newborns and in worst case scenario can cause hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. 
Symptoms of vitamin K deficiency. The most common, of course, is bleeding, which can present either as nose bleeding, which is known as epistaxis. It can present as a GI bleed. And as previously discussed in HDN, it can present as an intracranial bleed. Another physical exam finding is easy bruising. Diagnosis, of course you want to measure the vitamin K level and the normal is usually between 0 0.2 to 1.0 NG per ml. You want to measure the PT and the INR and both of these will be elevated. And in terms of treatment, the treatment of course is vitamin K replacement in particular phytonadione and this is given either PO or subcutaneously and here is the phytonadione this is given either IM or subcutaneously in this particular form this concentration is for neonates so let's take a look at a couple vignettes a term male infant was born at home via natural childbirth with the assistance of a lay midwife. He was breastfed and appeared healthy until two weeks of age when he began vomiting, became irritable, refused feedings, and lost consciousness. He was taken to an emergency service where he was deeply comatose and had irregular breathing. He appeared well nourished but pale and had a bulging anterior fontanelle. He underwent intubation and was given ventilatory support. His hemoglobin concentration was 6.8. A CT scan showed a large left-sided intracranial hemorrhage. Most likely vitamin that is deficient in this patient is. It's easy to figure this out if you've just watched a video about vitamin K deficiency. But let's try to understand what exactly is happening. So you have a baby that's now only two weeks old who was breastfed and breast milk is low in vitamin K and then this baby that has vitamin K deficiency was most likely unable to produce those vitamin K dependent clotting factors and that unfortunately led to excessive bleeding in the cranium and that's what has happened in this two-week-old infant. So the answer is vitamin K, choice E. A 15-year-old male presents with hemarthrosis of the right knee joint and a recent history of protracted bleeding from cuts or scrapes. He has no family history of bleeding disorders. The patient also notes a long history of chronic abdominal discomfort and diarrhea, which has been worse for the last six months occasionally accompanied by fever. Physical exam reveals patient at the fifth percentile for both height and weight. An actively bleeding rectal fissure is also noted. PT and INR are increased. Lab evaluation of the blood is likely to reveal low levels of. This patient is a teenager and he has obviously some GI disorder. He's got diarrhea, He's got abdominal discomfort. And if you notice, he's very low for his age with regard to weight. So he's not gaining weight like he should. So most likely he has some sort of malabsorption problem. He's not absorbing the vitamins that he should. And that's why he has diarrhea. He's just you know pooping them out. And that's why he has low weight. And in particular, he's probably not absorbing fat. And when you don't absorb fat, you also are unable to absorb vitamin K. And that is the reason he is bleeding. Because when you don't have vitamin K, you are unable to produce those vitamin K dependent clotting factors. And what are those vitamin K dependent clotting factors? They are factor 
2, 7, 9, and 10. And that would be choice C.